So thank you so much, Deb, for being here with us. And today we got together uh, really for us to experience your, your tool that you have developed uh, and have been quite successful in applying with a lot of your coaches. And uh, would you like to share more about the tool and um, before um, we begin? Yeah, just for a moment, uh, you know, I've kind of evolved a method of coaching that is that really kind of goes beyond the, the conscious mind and is really targeted at negotiating change with the subconscious mind so that all the, the shifts that are made are done on a subconscious level and that they become automatic. So it's real transformative in, in the moment and you know has just incredible results because the subconscious mind is probably one of the most beautiful resources we have for creating the lives that we want and learning how to work effectively with that has been just an incredible gift uh, over these 20 years of exploration and research on how to create transformation in the moment. Excellent. So um, the topic that I, I'll be the volunteer today. Okay, yay. So the topic I thought perhaps would be interesting for me to explore is I have this tendency to run, then burn out, and okay. then procrastinate. So um, I guess where I am right now is that I get excited about things and I work, work, work and success and achievement and I go all in. Mm -hmm. And then I have this, I reach a point where if I didn't see perhaps the results that I envisioned for myself and I didn't, didn't achieve my aspirations, then I'm like, okay, what's the point in even continuing with that? Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of that. backtrack and I'm like, I just want to give up now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I would like to understand it. And of course, it's rooted probably also in overall my tendencies. I have the tendency of, of um, running before I walk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I love what you're sharing, Rena, because so many of us uh, run a similar pattern. Uh, you know, particularly, uh, and I find that this is perhaps a little more true for women than for men, at least in my case with my clients. Uh, men seem to be a little more practical about, you know, how far they push, um, or they, they seem to be able to at least step back and refresh or regroup, whereas um, a lot of my you know, high-powered women clientele, they just push and push and push until they can't push anymore. And then they kind of, like you say, burn out. We kind of collapse under the weight of it all. So I love what you're sharing because it is relevant for so many of our listeners. And so here is what I heard you say, is that you run at full speed. You're all in until you burn out. And that you ask the question, what's the point? I want to give up. I run before I walk. Now, oddly enough, those are all patterns and they're revealed in your language. And we're going to address each one of those and perhaps discover some other things that you have not identified as yet. Brilliant. Okay, so you ready to jump in? Yes. Okay, first of all, I, I just, uh, you know, want our, our listeners to know that we, be, we do this work in a trance-like state. So I'm going to, you know, introduce uh, Rena into a gentle trance. Now, it's not hypnosis because you are fully aware of every single thing that's going on. Your conscious mind is actually taking notes. So before we begin, we're going to invite Rena's brilliant conscious mind to step back and be a witness to this process and take mental notes because every single thing that is revealed it from the subconscious is going to be invaluable to the conscious mind in helping Rena achieve whatever she wants. So that's our foundation. And so we begin by just taking a deep breath in, sitting back, you know, upright, that's it. 
And by the way, I am going to encourage that you close your eyes through this process. There's only one reason for that. That's to keep the focus inward. Excellent. Excellent. And by the way, for our listeners, for those of you that have similar issues of as what we've identified here, you can actually go through this process as Rena goes through it, but make sure you're in a place where you're perfectly secure and safe and there are no interruptions. No, so do not, this is one of those things, do not do while you're driving, do not do while you're watching your baby or cooking dinner, okay? Got it? So we begin. Slow, deep breath in through the nose, exhaling slowly and gently through the mouth. That's right, in through the nose and out through the mouth as you quickly bring your attention to the movement in the body. Notice how the body supports the breath. And on the inhale, the belly expands, the rib cage opens, the lungs fill, the chest lifts, the shoulders might shift slightly. On the exhale, the shoulders drop, chest retracts, the rib cage and belly contract as the lungs empty. Follow the movement of the breath. Notice as much subtle movement as you can. And the more you notice, the more aware you become. And the more aware you become, the more you notice as each breath takes you deeper, deeper, deeper into connection with the physical body, deeper, deeper, deeper into awareness of the emotion matrix, the network of patterns, deeper, deeper, deeper into access to the quantum field, energy and information that is always present and always available. That's right. And now take a slow, deep breath in and hold that breath for a few seconds. And exhale and hold the emptiness. Inhale and hold. Exhale and hold. Inhale and hold as you drift gently into the hold. That's right. Exhale and hold as you drift even deeper into the hold. That's right. And now continue the slow deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth as each breath takes you deeper into connection, deeper into awareness, deeper into access. And now in this level of connection, we're going to scan the body from head to toe. And as you do so, tell me, Rena, where, if anywhere, inside or outside, the body is information called running at full speed. You'll get some kind of inclination. The body will signal you with a pressure, a twitch, a tingle, a change in temperature. It will signal you. So where, if anywhere, inside or outside the body is information called running at full speed. And when you have that, please share that with me. I feel tension here. And okay. strangely, under my armpit and kind of like the solar plexus area. Beautiful. Beautiful. And what's great to notice about that is that often these patterns reside in more than one place. And so you're doing great. So scanning again. Where, if anywhere, inside or outside is information called all or nothing? I'm all in or I'm doing nothing, all or nothing, where, if anywhere, is this information called all or nothing? It feels more like my jar, like teeth clenched. Beautiful. Beautiful. And scanning again, where, if anywhere, inside or outside, is information called burnout? It's 
like in my that solar plexus navel. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Scanning again, where if anywhere, inside or outside, is the information called what's the point? It's a question that resides in a pattern. Scanning quickly, where if anywhere, is what's the point? Feels like it's under my armpits and here. And the jaw as well? Again. Yeah, okay. I'm kind of like in the back okay. of the um, Okay, and that's, and scanning again, where, if anywhere, in, inside or outside is the information called, I want to give up. More like my abdominal area, okay. maybe, kind of like diaphragm. Got it. And where, if anywhere, is information called, I run before I walk, run before I walk. Where, if anywhere, is this information? It's kind of like along my spine, the back. Mm -hmm. Jars again. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I just keep seeing myself like, like a horse, you know, <laughs> with a carriage on the back and that I'm the one trying to Ah, add, but so you're you're pulling a carriage. Yeah, I don't know. Ever since we started, I'm just seeing like this analogy. Yeah. Beautiful. And I love that because as you as you focus on that, where, if anywhere, is the weight of pulling this carriage? Where it's if anywhere like behind me, like as if it's like behind you, outside yeah, the body. The Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And so now. As you scan the body arena, where does the body want attention first? Is it in around the head and the armpits? Is it the jaw? Well, let's say the head, the jaw, the armpits, the lower abdomen, the solar plexus, the spine or behind the body. The body will tell you where we're supposed to begin. So as you just scan the body. Just trust that you'll get the signal. It feels more like on the back. On the back. And so it may be the carriage, the pulling the carriage. Or is it the spine? Or is it both? It's just the back? weight, the weight of it. Like if I didn't have all that, I could run past. Yes. So it's the weight behind the weight that you're pulling. So bringing your attention to the weight behind you, the weight you're pulling, the weight you're carrying. And I would like to speak to that information. So here's how that works, Rena. I will speak to it. It will respond to those questions, but it can only share that information with you. Your job is to share it with me as precisely as it is delivered to you. Is that okay? Excellent. So weight behind the body, the weight of pulling all of this stuff. How long have you been with Rena? I don't remember when I wasn't without it. <laughs> you don't remember when you came? When I was without it. It's been there for a long time. You don't time. remember ever being without it. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to make sure that I'm speaking to the weight and not to Rena. So Rena, you might not remember ever being without it. Wait, what do you remember? How long have you been there? A long time. It's like this life always. <laughs> always, the answer is always. And wait, when you say always, do you mean since birth, since con conception, or do you mean even before this lifetime? Even before. even before. So before this lifetime. And may I ask you, wait, do you know how many lifetimes you've been in service, Tarina? Hundreds, what comes to mind? Hundreds, wow, you've been around a long time. And if it's true, that you have a job to do in this lifetime. What's the job you came to do? 
slow me down? Slow her down. So that what? Why do you want to slow her down? Something with practicality. Something with okay, be practical. Can I ask you then, wait, be, that she's pulling behind her. When you served her in previous lifetimes, was there some danger in her going too fast? Was there some risk involved in going too fast? Was there some consequence in going too fast? What I'm seeing now is like an air balloon, like the, you know, the small air balloon and with weight on, on the bottom, like mm -hmm. not, not flying away. Okay. <laughs> Remaining grounded. Ah, to keep her grounded so she doesn't fly away. Got it. And what about this lifetime? Does she still need to be grounded? Yeah. Yeah. And may I ask, are there other ways to ground her besides adding all this weight to carry? Comes to mind is that there are different aspects of my life that I don't want to take care of. Ah, because so there's things she's ignoring. That is that what you're saying to her? Okay. And so you want her to get grounded in all those aspects? Yeah, like pay it to help me pay attention to. Pay attention. And when you say pay attention, do you also mean take responsibility or not? Responsibility is not the word that's coming to my mind. And what would be the word? You want her to recognize and pay attention to their things she's ignoring. So what do you want her to do about that? Seems like I am up in the clouds. Mm, she's up in the clouds and you need to bring her down to earth? Yeah. OK. And can I ask you, what is the upside, the benefit of your strategy? You know, this weighing her down, slowing her down, you know, trying to ground her. Uh, it seems like I don't really value things on the physical plane much. Uh, like I'm kind of outgrown, mm -hmm. outgrown a lot of the things on the physical plane. Okay. And, and so, so yeah. may I ask you then again, weight behind her, kind of holding her, slowing her down, weighing her down, holding her back from running faster. You said she's up in the clouds. Is she still up in the clouds? She's not, but she wants to be. Uh, she wants to be. So you're keeping her grounded, even though she wants to be in the clouds. Yeah, it's like sitting on top of me so that I don't <laughs> fly away. OK, so make sure she doesn't fly away. So can I ask you what would happen if she did fly away? What are you concerned about? That she'll never come back. Mm. And so that's the fear, she'll never come back. And so can I ask you if you could give Rena anything in the whole wide world, anything at all, that really was about keeping her grounded, a bit practical and, you know, earthly, <laughs> you know, earthbound in some way. What I'm seeing now is that I'm, I'm not growing, she's not growing roots. 
She's not growing roots. So what I'm seeing now is like a tree. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have your like head above the clouds and in the clouds, like a tree, a really tall tree. Yeah. At the same time, also they have good. to be grounded, grounding that they have to be roots going each ah. other. So instead of weighing her down and holding her back, you could actually help her plant roots to send roots deep into the ground. But she doesn't want to. Uh, but she doesn't know what it's like yet because she doesn't know the benefit of having both roots and mm, kind of uh, cloud visions. Because what happens if she has cloud visions and she just flies away and doesn't do what needs to be done? I don't know. Nothing comes to mind. Is it possible that she would spend more time daydreaming, visioning, you know, anticipating what how things could be? but without the roots to hold them in place. Yeah, she she kind of wants to be have her adventures and fly here and there. Mm -hmm. Well, you know that energy can leave the body. You know that, right? OK, so if you have a rooted tree for her to return to, what would that do for her? It feels so limiting. It feels limiting? Is it really if she could leave it anytime she wanted to? But if I can leave anytime I want to, why would you? Well, you said that the problem is she's not grounded. She's not staying in the earthly realm. And may I ask, do most of the things that she wants to make happen need to happen on the earthly realm? Yeah, a lot of it is. Yeah. And so she actually needs to have access to both, doesn't she? And all this does is give her stability. And so I'm curious, by the way, uh, wait behind her. We can try this on and if it doesn't work, we can undo it. Nothing's permanent. It's not a long term commitment unless it works. Does that make sense? Okay, well, right now, Rena is resisting roots. Is that true? Yes. And weight behind her, does she really need roots in order to secure what she wants to create? Yes. Okay, so even though she's resisting it, can we invite her to try it on for size again? I think the fear is she can never leave. For some reason, there is this fear that she's going to get stuck. Yes. Yeah. But she doesn't know because she's never tried. Is that true? She could continue to drag you around as weight to keep her grounded. She could continue to push until she can't push anymore and then just burn out. We could continue this old strategy for another few lifetimes if you want to, or we could try on something different just to see if it produces a different result. And if we get the result we want, we get to keep it. If we don't get the result we want, we can discard it. And so do you see that Rena always has the choice? This is not, you know, this is not like, once we try it on, we're stuck with it forever. Yes. 
So would you be willing to try that on for just a few minutes just to see how it goes? Yes. Okay, so wait behind her. It's time for you to step into her feet and send roots deep into the ground. And by the way, this is metaphorically grounding into all the wisdom of Mother Earth. Sending that those roots all the way into the core of the earth, that source of incredible power, immeasurable power. Sending those roots deep into the wisdom, the knowledge, the history, the ancient wisdom of the earth, all the way into the core and connecting with a power source that is unlike anything she's ever experienced. And when the roots are deep and expanded the way you want them to be, just say yes. Like energy's like going down. Yes. Like somewhere chest level now. Okay. I might need to take a minute. Okay, then do just breathe into it, allow it to happen. But also as the roots are going deep, it's also time to give permission for the tree to grow. The deeper the roots, the taller, the more powerful the tree. It's kind of like bamboo if you think about it, you know? That's also what just was just coming to my mind, like uh, just a bamboo compost crop. Yeah. Having lots of lots of fruits going into the ground. Mm, kind of almost like the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. And the beanstalk goes all the way up to the heavens as far as you want it to go. In fact, there's no limit to where it can grow. And that growth gives strength, power, stability, and full access to higher realms. And just as the roots go deeper, allow the tree, the stalk, the vine, whatever it is, to grow higher and higher and higher. And then as this process is taking place, does it feel restrictive in any way? It feels like more like curious. Okay, let's see what's what's here mm -hmm. with the earth. What's let's happening what... here with the things? Yeah. So let's see what's here. Let's see what's up there, and let's see what's down there. Let's see what power happens as this vine. Is it a vine? Is it a tree? Is it a stalk? What does it look like to you? Like a bush. Okay. And so just whatever is happening with it, just allow it to grow upwards as, it, as its roots go deeper so that it expands its access and its wisdom of Mother Earth and also the higher realms. And just continue to allow the growth until it has arrived at a place where it wants to be right now. And so just take one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, just complete the process. Just complete it. The subconscious has no time constraints. Anything can happen right now. And so it's time to take a deep breath in and know that all the information that has been revealed, all the agreements that have ma been made are fully in, uh, infused in every cell of the body, imprinted in the DNA. New patterns have been agreed upon. New strategies are in place. New neural pathways are formed. And all of this happens simultaneously. All of it working in ultimate collaboration for your highest good. And so to take a deep breath in and bring your attention back to the moment. And I want to just share with our audience that there are times when we have patterns that are so well entrenched. In Rena's case, this is always fascinating. 300 years, a thousand years, many hundred lifetimes. We are talking about 
patterns that have been handed down through many lifetimes, through much of her ancestry. Not every situation is going to be as challenging. Many of our patterns come much more recent than that in this lifetime or one previous lifetime. But I do want you to know that the subconscious, you know, if you're persistent and you remember that everything comes to serve and that the subconscious is really committed to your highest good, that we can always find a higher level strategy. It may not be easy, but it is definitely doable if you understand how this whole process works. works. And I know that when the, it's as complex as this, it may not be so easy to follow, but there really is a framework that I use and that I, and whether you recognize it or not, I use it consistently through the process. And so this is a transformation method that I, I am so passionate about because it has so much wisdom in it because the wisdom comes from the client. Even a thousand years of, of, of patterning, which is like kind of mind blowing, I got to admit, Rena. Well, I guess my situation is, is unique in the sense of that I've been working really on myself for the last six years. So I'm now I'm getting to the ancient seeds of things, you know, and I guess that's why it's like 300 years and so many lifetimes. And, felt really and, really and I think it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant uh, because it lets us know that there is information in our DNA that is still operating, that can still be a source of restriction in our present day life. And that, you know, through this type of method, we can, we can finally break through thousands of years of patterning. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Rena, I want to thank you for your patience throughout this. Thank you for yours. This was incredible. Thank you for staying with me for such a long time. And I know I have a lot of questions and I know we are planning a series of, of conversations around this. And so perhaps next time we meet, we, we go into the Q&A 